Yeah, we back. Now let's have a let's have a complicated conversation, right? Let's have some real talk amongst the brethren. Leave the emotions at the door. Only step in the building if you have logic and reason. And you know, you understand one plus one equals two. Now, let's understand the reason why European nations, white nations, European men, white men will never pay reparations to black nations or black men. And when I have this discussion, I'm talking about as a whole, collectively, worldwide, globally, I'm talking about real reparations. Don't point me to some to some nonsense talking about someone over here got like a free scholarship or someone over here got paid like fourteen dollars. I'm talking about real reparations in the billions and trillions of dollars, the type of stuff that y'all be talking about, you know, the type of stuff that men will be ready to go to war over. OK, yeah, I'm talking about those type of reparations. The reason why it will never happen is because let's take a look on the screen. Let's read this um, this thread of tweets that I had found very short and to the point, but I think that I think it was very interesting. It starts out by saying something people don't understand is that for over 500 years, Europeans have been at war with Africa. It was only in the late 19th century that they began to win and colonize Africa. But the war began centuries before it went on to continue. One famous example is the Portuguese bombing of Swahili cities in the 15th century. They were also at war with the Bantu Congo from the onset. If we look at Benin art, we see that whenever depicting war scenes, they show European gunmen fighting for them. They use their guns to kill Africans, but were reluctant to sell Africans guns for a while. This means that we have been fighting Europeans for a long time. This is common knowledge. What we don't realize is that if they have been fighting with us since 1440 and their first contact with West Central Africa yet did not begin to succeed until the 19th century, this means we were winning for over 300 years. This reality seems to pass by people's awareness when they claim that we have never defeated them. It took them over 300 years to subjugate us. Now, let's discuss those tweets and why I thought they were interesting. Now, if you want to get technical, if you want to talk about the wars, the conflicts and the tensions that the black men in East Africa had during the days of Egypt, Nubia, and Kush, etc., etc., with the the Asiatics and the Eurasian races. Well, then you can even say that we have been in conflict with these foreigners since at least two to three thousand years. But if you go by our recent contact with the Europeans in particular, then yes, it would be around the 1400s. And the reason why I thought it was interesting and reparations came to mind was because that if you go and listen to the European perspective on why they refuse to pay reparations, you'll notice that even they won't truly be honest. The reason why they won't pay reparations is because in their minds, I know it may sound crazy, but listen, brothers, it's I'm only here for the logic. I'm not here for the emotions in their mind. They have established and built everything they have fair and square, meaning that in their minds, they've risked their life for it. They risked their life at sea fighting against the Africans on the continent, fighting against that black man on the Caribbean, fighting against black men all over the Western hemisphere. Like, bro, it was not a, a easy ride for them to the top, so to speak, right? They lost a lot of men on the way up. A lot of their women and children ended up as casualties and sacrifices as well. When they went to foreign territories, they got beat up by disease, starvation. The elements of nature were actively fighting against them. Another thing that we have to take into account as well, the black man of today is nothing like the black man from three, four, five, six, seven centuries ago. You have to understand the European was dealing with a whole different beast back in those times, right? The black man from centuries ago was 10 times more arrogant, 10 times more gangster, 10 times more ruthless. Like the Europeans, like you know how the Europeans are. They like to write everything down the very form where they keep journals, they keep diaries, they keep records. And, you know, they would come and try to finalize deals, have everything in writing. And, you know, the black man of, you know, from centuries ago would sometimes go into, go into negotiations with the Europeans, you know, make a deal with the Europeans and then wake up later down the line and be like, ah, man, man, fuck them, man, fuck them, you know what I'm saying, we're gonna go over there, and we're gonna take that land back, yeah, you know, I agreed to give them that land, you know, way back, man, eh, you know, we the, we the only thing that runs shit over here, so we're gonna go over there and take that shit back, and if, and if he, if he don't wanna give it back, then we're we gonna pop him, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> then we just gonna pop him, we could do it the easy way or the hard way, you gotta understand, the black man from centuries ago was a, you know, he was a beast, man, our ancestors, they were a beast, man, they did not, they did not look at the Europeans as anything to be, you know, worshipped or venerated or they didn't look up to their culture at all like you know how black people in the modern day you know we full of self-hate we full of self-hatred for our culture and our identity and we just venerate everything that the europeans came with and all the other races and foreign groups but back in the day we weren't like that bro we had a very 
high self-esteem we thought we were you know the most the most popping thing in town we thought we had the most superior weaponry the most superior culture the most superior way of life the most superior continent the most superior land our ancestors thought they were the shit bro our ancestors thought that man the europeans wasn't shit even when the europeans had guns like you know our ancestors some of them didn't even like they didn't even value that they were like man what the fuck is a gun bro you a punk bro you know what i'm saying come through fight me like a man head up bro Head up, man. Grab your machete. Grab your sword, nigga. Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? G get out of here with this gun shit. You a coward. You fight. You you shoot me from all the way down the block. What's wrong with you, bro? Get over here and fight. <laughs> like our ancestors, they were, man, they did not hesitate to, you know, smash on the Europeans, bro. You know, there were famous accounts like, you know, when the Zulus smashed on the Dutch. I believe, I forget what that massacre was called, but man, the Zulus came and obliterated an entire settlement of European foreigners. And I say that to say is, the reason why the Europeans feel like they won it fair and square is because we did not make it easy for them on their road to the top. There were many military engagements back on the continent where the entire European battalion, the entire, the entire force got obliterated by the native african troops man and the narrative that we're given as children we think that we just came through took losses took l's got conquered got obliterated when that was not the case it was not the case and i think if more of us truly understood our true history then we would understand why european governments in general hold a hostile position towards black nations we would not be surprised by the laws that are put in place by the actions that are taken both economically and militaristically i take it personal or be surprised when certain leaders come along and try to do positive things for the people and they end up getting overthrown or assassinated we would understand that life is a competition and this conflict that has been waging for centuries past, it is still going on. And guess what? Because the foundation of their wealth was built on this conflict, they have to maintain the hostile position that they have always maintained against us. So any logical thinking black man would understand why reparations is a fantasy. Because as we all know, if Africa begins to thrive, harness their natural resources, harness their human labor, their human capital, all their best minds and talent, their best brains and their best talent goes to work in producing and developing for the continent. Do you understand what that means for Western Europe? Do you understand what that means for North America? The economies of these places will be flipped upside down. The entire paradigm will be shifted and the third world will shift from where it currently is into the developed world. The developed world, quote unquote, will end up looking like the third world and the developing world currently will end up looking like the first world. So logically speaking, any European man, any American man who's involved in the highest levels of politics would never throw his support behind any legislation that would put reparations back in the hands of those who were the sons and daughters of the transatlantic slave trade or any of the atrocities that happened across the African continent because that is not in their best economic or geopolitical interest and that decision would not be in favor of their children that will be born in generations to come. So that's why reparations will never be paid. It's not personal, man. It's not personal. Everybody is defending their interests. Everybody is guarding their territory. So as a black man, you should do the same. You should put yourself in a position to where you become powerful enough so if they don't want to give you reparations you can enforce your will and you can take reparations but currently as it stands as a collective we are not in a position to take on that kind of endeavor you know we're not in a position to go out and sanction a world power and cripple their economy we're not in a position to go out and be able to get our people to boycott whole entire industries we're not in a position to really you know flex our muscle and flex our influence just yet because as it stands we are currently locked in and integrated into their system into their system top to bottom their educational system their economy everything from top to bottom their banking system we are all integrated into things that they have established institutions that they have established so until we can separate ourselves from that then we can begin to establish things of our own to insulate ourselves and provide the necessities of life for our people and also to build the capital necessary to wage economic warfare against those who we claim to be our adversaries. If you cannot provide the basic necessities of life for your people, then you cannot wage economic war or any type of warfare against any entity. You're just talking fantasy. You're just hoping and praying and wishing on a star because at any given time, the quote unquote adversary can shut off your food supply, keep you out of any industry. So until we can get some large scale self-reliance and self-sufficiency, you know, go, talking about getting reparations from the current world powers, you're just wasting time and time is ticking. We got to get moving. We got to get to the paper, bro. We can't be sitting around waiting on these white boys to cut no check. We already know. We already know they ain't with it, bro. We already know when the Haitian government made a formal demand to the French government for reparations almost 20 years ago. 
the Haitian government got overthrown and the president got exiled, sent to Africa. So listen, we already know what type of time they on. So we got to give reparations to ourselves, build our individual and collective power, and then flex our muscle once we have established the power necessary to wage economic warfare against those who we refer to as our enemies, quote unquote. So it's your boy Nefakari Dessaline back in the building. Yes, indeed. And I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, sh now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genders. Falsifying information. Know they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching me, blocking my vision. Care for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need to protect it. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and make it ambition. I'm blessed by the gods, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They making no hourly wage. I got business. This shit is an art. And they can never be taught Selling my soul, I can never be bought Play with my money, I see you ain't caught Run to the check and I do it for sport Babylon falling, I go to the source Packing my luggage and go overseas Shorty be with me and she so at least Shorty be chugged and I'm calling her Hershey Secret intelligence probably gon' murk me Don't fuck with brands, cause nigga I'm Haitian Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces